Yo, what up? It's your boy Owen JJ Stone, aka O Doctor. Welcome to another episode of IQMZ Tech, where we try to find out what's going on in the news and serve it to you in an eloquent way. Now, just so you know, uh, we missed last week because I was out traveling and gallivanting and doing some things. I apologize, but uh, for the next two weeks, I'm looking for a replacement for Ryan because he's got some personal things to handle. And while he's gone, I'm gonna get some talent in here. We might, you know, what I mean, have a party, like throw ice cream thing. And I mean, because you know, when when people leave the job, you know, we gotta. Go out and <laughs> oh, hey, right here, you're still Look, here, Ryan. Hey, don't be trying to replace me just yet. All right. Hey, no, 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 never that. I might, you know, uh, uh, you know, we we'll figure it out, buddy. You know, you go ahead and take care uh-huh. of the thing. Take care. You know, you, you know, get, you're gonna get somebody more talented. And you're gonna start look, getting look, emails. Look, 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 look. I, I, they nobody more talented than you. Ain't nobody. <laughs> don't nobody read that thing like you read that thing. Now, so you know, PC gazer hiding in, in the darkness. I forgot he was here. I was. I'll tell y'all about it later. Just you know, keep just keep an eye out for your boy. You know I mean? <laughs> See if I can figure something out. So yeah, how you been, right guy? What's you know what's What's new in the world with you? How you doing? How you been? How you are? Not much. I had a surprise week off last week. So, uh, man, I, I watched some TV. Yeah, and, and you had an anniversary. I had an anniversary. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, t- took care of the wife. You know what I mean? They had fun. That's that's a good thing. That's a good. I don't have no anniversaries. I'm all alone with no one beside me. Oh, man. But it's okay. It's okay. I live vicariously through all my other friends having anniversaries. <laughs> they have to remember because <laughs> those are things I actually with an iPhone now you ain't got to worry about that no more. It reminds you about f- birthdays, anniversaries. Like it, oh yeah, it, it gives you a good heads up. You know what I mean? And then you got Snapchat backing you up on this day last year. You were just doing such and such. Like oh yeah, that that is that was a year ago. So. Yeah, between between Facebook and my phone and LinkedIn, I don't miss congratulating anybody on anything. <laughs> no, because something's always reminding you. Even if even if you're a day late, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're at least you're in the vicinity. You know what I mean? Sometimes I like hitting people early with the preemptive strike. So that way, <laughs> by the time it comes around, I do forget. You know what I mean? It, it's all good. It's all good. It's true. Um, so we got we got some any good stories this week? Anything fun going on in the world? No, we have nothing. No, no story. I'm just kidding. All right, well, let's go ahead and close it down, everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, All right, I'm going to start it off here with uh, the Galaxy Z Fold Ultra model number has been spotted in the wild. Uh, Samsung is expected to launch two models of the Galaxy Z Fold Six this year, and now a new leak shows a model number. For an ultra model, Galaxy Club is now reporting that the model number for this new Galaxy Z Fold 6 will be SMF958. <sighs> that number might sound random. It sure does. <laughs> uh, but Samsung's naming conventions include the Galaxy S24 Ultra with the model number SM9, uh, SMS928 and the S24 Plus, which got SMS926. Oh, that's a lot of numbers. Y'all just name it what it is. Like, well, why does it have to have these numbers? Can't name it like the one to because you know what SM stands for. You don't know what SM stands for? Samsung. Sexy motherfucker. <laughs> I'm just telling you what it is. That's why they, I mean, that's why they got that SM up in there. You know what I mean? And, and they get us demonetized. Yeah, they throw the number behind it to throw you off, but that's that's what it's for. You know what I mean? That's why that's why it's SM nine four B eight seven eleven. You know what I mean? They got you by the time you get to the last number, you forget that they out here cousin with their phone model. So it's uh, <laughs> I actually love these phones now. The first iteration of anything is always not that great, but at least they did it. They're a flagship company doing it and putting it out. Uh, plus one, uh, other smaller or lesser name. Android phones, uh, a lot of Asian companies had foldable phones, but Samsung coming out with one makes it legitimate and they've gotten better and better year over year. So them coming out with the new version and a plus version or whatever you want to call it, it's good for them. I mean, these phones are in the wild and and I, oh God, if I wasn't just trapped in the iPhone system, I would want one. And, and Apple's coming out with their fold soon too. And they're going to say it's magic light or whatever and act like they created it. But Samsung is really nailing it with these foldable phones. They, they're really great. I, I'm going to take your word for it. Uh, I, I mean, I saw one. It was first gen. 
And man, that screen just looked like it would scratch so easily. And I can scratch anything. I could scratch diamond. Well, that's why I said the first gen wasn't that great, but they've gotten better and better and better. Like so much so now they even have cases for them. And it's funny because like whenever I see one now and I think that like, oh, that screen looks like it's cracking. I ask, is there a case on that? And they're like, yeah, the cases that get like the little bit of crease in them or whatever, but uh, not the phones. The phones have been holding up really well. And as far as you scratching it, you fold it in on itself. So you're going to scratch that third outside screen more so than your inside screen because you get to fold it closed. Okay. I, I think, I guess you have a point there. I'll go take a look at, at one of the newer ones, but I just got this pixel and I don't want to feel bad about my purchase. You know, you know I mean? <laughs> they don't, don't have FOMO, but I'm just saying they're, they're nice now. So, I mean, next time, next time you're thinking about it, you know I mean, you want to save a little space in your pocket, have some extra extra footage because all, all we're doing is watching videos and, and cat memes on these things like we're not doing anything on them important it's just having the more real estate same reason why i have the uh plus max version of my phone is just because it's got a little bit more room for video other other than that it's the same dang gum phone it's not doing anything different i i still have my my, my backup phones iphone pro 13 but it's not the max and sometimes it's just nice having a smaller phone in my hands and stick it in my pocket. But then when I want to watch videos or pixel people and pictures, it's just nice having the bigger phone. Right. So having a bigger screen makes it even better. And being able to fold it up and fit it in your pocket is really nice. And I'm with you. I, the last iPhone I had before the, the 14 Max was a mini. And I liked it. I really, yeah. really liked it. Yeah. It, it's just it, because you have all the power yeah. that, that the phone's supposed to have. But it just... You forget it's in your pocket. You're not worried about you're talking about scratching. You're not worried about it falling and dinking and dunking and stuff like that. And in your hand, you've got a better grip on it. I mean, there's cases for everything, but those foldable screens have gotten so much better. And Samsung is leading the way. Like I said, here comes Apple right around the corner. Are going to be launching theirs, and they're going to be lighter, thinner, sexier, made with an aluminum or whatever they try to sell you on to make you think that they did it first. So, but it's good. They're good. Yeah. Don't don't look at one right now though, because you will you will be upset. All right. Well, I'm going to go to the next story, and uh, we're looking at Google. Uh, Google's Find My Device network has apparently been on hold as it waits for Apple to implement unknown tracker alerts. Google is said to want Apple devices or device users to be able to spot its trackers in case someone is using them maliciously. Looks like we might be getting closer. 9 to 5 Mac discovered strings in the latest iPhone beta that detail how an iPhone would be able to detect third-party trackers. So I always felt like Apple was just holding us off because they didn't want someone else having a tracker comparable to theirs. Tile's been out for forever, and Tile is what I'm sure pushed Apple into this market because before Apple had the AirTags, Tile was killing it. I had Tiles. I would give them out as gifts to people um at holidays because they just work so well and it's just something nice to be able to find your keys now with the air tags i've got these things they're in my shoes i probably have one in my nostril right now i have so many air tags i, I could just reach around my room and i know that there's one <laughs> somewhere they're everywhere they're in all my bags all my cases uh my camera gear everything everywhere i go there's just air tags and it's nice but people have used them maliciously they're tracking people with them um so I feel like they did that because, well, look, we don't want competition. It's not that they don't want to be able to scan them, but it's just good. Get it done, Apple. Just stop being a jerk. Get it done. A little competition never hurts you. The brand recognition alone, you've got enough of a head start. Um, you need something like this for Android because, again, they've killed off the tile market. People don't even think or mention tile that much anymore. Right. Uh, so this is exciting. This is good. I was an early tile user. I liked it, and I, I do like the uh the apple um but here's the problem i lose my phone more than i lose my devices so if i could squeeze the the uh the tracker then uh and have my phone ring that would be really really useful and it doesn't do that so that is the one key thing about having an iphone i can say hey blah 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 and my phone will call out to me what it does that yeah i'm not gonna say because it'll trigger people's phones you're blowing my mind while they're listening you know that right i know 
I yeah. can't I can't get what's her name to to understand anything I say in the first place. Like, oh, okay. Say, well, play this song. She plays that song. You know? It's funny because my daughter's cell phone, she, she does not listen to her at all. She responds to me, but she's not responding to my daughter. It's really, really weird. And I've tried to cancel it and reprogram, retrain her, all that stuff. So I do get that. But like, yeah, when I can't, when I walk, I just turn everything off in the house and I just say, hey. And then it's in the room, like, huh? And then I, <laughs> then I got to go by the house and I'm trying to track it down with the sound. But uh, yeah, at least I have that. But you no, know, you, you got a Pixel phone, so you need this tracker. <laughs> I do. My the pixel's way better at listening to me. the The problem is, is uh, it doesn't it it's not any more useful. They haven't implemented whatever the the AI system is for their uh, Google Assistant yet. But uh, it does listen to me a bit better, so I can call it from across the room. Yeah. Thank or goodness. if if at least it was quiet, you could tell it to play a song, so you could try and find it, which is what I did the last time when I did the huh thing. And it said haunted me like four times. I'm like, I don't know where the phone was. And it was like <laughs> on a shelf. Like I was walking out of the room and I put it on a shelf and I'm looking all over the living room. And I'm like, I, I huh? I'm like, I'm just like a I got owl in the who who like I was freaking out. <laughs> I was kind of like, hey, play such and such. And started playing music. I'm like, oh thank God. <laughs> so then I found it. So you know, try try and get it to play a song for you next time you get lost in the sauce and see if that works out. I will. You know what? We're going to stay on uh, Google for a bit, though. Uh, there's been a, a big 20-year birthday for Gmail uh, when Gmail launched with a suspiciously, suspiciously timed press release 20 years ago on April 1st. April Fool's Day. The tech world brushed it off as a hoax. It promised a gigabit, or I'm sorry, a gigabyte of storage, uh, which was an extreme leak. A uh, leap from the 15 megabyte inbox that uh, most users had access to at the time. So everyone thought, okay, this is an April Fool's joke, but it wasn't. And 20 years later, this is one thing that Google has not killed off yet. Thank goodness. I use Gmail all the time. I'm a paying customer of Gmail and I'm a free abuser of Gmail. Were you around in 2004? Like, do you remember when Gmail like came about? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So I remember it specifically because someone sent me, it was after the first, so I didn't hear it on launch day or whatever, but it was in that same week. And somebody's like, blah, 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 Gmail. And I'm like, that's not real. Like, cause I had heard about it from April fools. I'm like, oh, that's April fool. Like Google doesn't have email. And it's like, oh, it's Gmail. And I'm thinking like G unit, like Doug, like at the time 50 sounds popular. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, you got Gmail. Like, oh, you know, and I'm, you know, basically laughing at a white person thing. They're trying to be a gangster. I'm like, you trying to be a thug with Gmail. Like, oh, you're a G. And they were like, no, it's Gmail. And I'm like, okay. And then finally, two days after that, I looked at it like, oh, this, there is a Gmail. And it, <laughs> it was just a funny time because it's just listening to people say, I got Gmail. And I'm like, I just, for the for like the first four years, I thought of rap and hip hop music and, you know, um, uh, 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 mafia or something like that with the G's. And uh, what was your email before Gmail? What, what were you rocking? What were you using? I was I was one of the rare few that had uh, an actual domain name of my own, so I hosted my own email. But when Gmail came along, I was like, "This is way more convenient," and I yeah. jumped over to it. And yeah. So if you're if you're listening this far, and if you're on YouTube, the one of the five people that watch on YouTube, what was your email before Gmail? Because everybody's got Gmail now. I was uh, Captain of all ships. I had a Yahoo. I still was rocking my AOL, and I had a Hotmail. And my Hotmail, which still is around, is Killer Stone at Hotmail. And you have no idea, like, when I was at the airport, and I'm like, what's your email? And I'm like, Killer Stone. And people look at me, and I'm like, why are you looking at me? And for the longest time, I forgot, like, oh, Killer, you think I'm a murderer. Okay, so I'm a mass murderer that put Killer in their email. And I'm like, Ugh. So you missed the boat, man, Killer Mike. I know. I, I, uh, and that's why I, I was on early. I mean, like I said, Killer Stone, <laughs> I was doing, I thought it was cool. I thought I was being a Gmail. You know what I mean? But <laughs> apparently, I was scaring people at the airport and on, on job applications, <laughs> to which uh, I changed it up on my Yahoo. Oh, because, oh, my AOL, guess what my AOL was oh, besides no. Odoctor? Because I've had Odoctor for everything since anything on a computer. I, I'm scared but, to guess. My email for AOL is the exact and to the opposite 
of Killer Stone. It was Mr. All with three W's at <laughs> AOL. So I was Mr. All and Killer Stone. And I'm like, see, see, look at the balance. So I started using the Mr. All email a lot more. To, you know, it, it, it went over better with the people. Oh, those are the, the good randoms. Ideas. The randoms. Uh, but yeah, get, G, again, something like you said, something Gmail hasn't killed off and has evolved and is one of their cow toe bells for making money. It's something that makes them money. Yeah, so, well, you know what doesn't make them money? What? Google Podcasts. Dang. Google Podcasts, which has long been the Android equivalent of the podcast app on the iPhone, is shutting down next week. Reporting indicates that Google's decision was based on higher user engagement with YouTube, where it is already merging its music and other audio offerings at this time. I, for one, am sad. I use Google Podcasts, and now I'm going to have to use Spotify. Yep, right now you're on the Spotify life. Yeah. And I guess they're, it sounds like they're going to merge it with YouTube, and YouTube's going to be more like how Spotify and iTunes is now, where it's like, Oh, do you want music? Do you want music videos? Do you want podcasts? Do you want podcast videos? Like, so they're trying to put everything in together, which they should have done because, like, YouTube music and everything being separate, and YouTube TV and everything, everything. There's just so many YouTube things right now. So throwing podcasts in there on YouTube would be good because then my daughter could fall asleep using the uh, the TV instead of her phone every night listening to podcasts that she listens to and she falls asleep to. So I, I know it's sad for you, but it's okay. Yeah, it'll be all right. I, I mean, Spotify is pretty good. There's some exclusives over there that I listen to. Uh, and then the Joe Rogan. Yes. I, I wanted to not listen to Joe Rogan, but sometimes he has some great guests on like Neil deGrasse Tyson. I will listen to that man, no matter what show he's on. So uh, I, I've only listened to zero Joe Rogan podcast completely. Really? I've just listened to 50% of a Joe Rogan podcast 0% of the time. I've gotten the most I've gotten are 10 minute clips on YouTube. That's the longest I've listened to Joe Rogan at one time, one period, like a 10 minute, maybe a 15 minute clip, but I've never watched. Not even with people that I love, like with Dave Chappelle or like, you're right. He, he does have great guests on, you know, Robert down Jr. like some of the classic episodes he's had. I just never, engaged in the whole entire thing it just doesn't speak to me at all it is not my jam most of the episodes do go down a weird road if there's one podcast i could recommend to people uh is lex friedman that guy can get an interview out of somebody he's interviewed just about everyone from elon musk to uh gosh just like heads of state like he he somehow he even got netanyahu to do an interview like nobody can get netanyahu to do an interview for more than five minutes he got him for like an hour lex friedman yeah put him up on the screen google go, oh, google i'll google, google. Yeah. I'll google. Here, let's see I, I looked up lex friedman i just want to make sure it's the same lex yeah. friedman uh, let's see here conversations yeah. about science technology yeah that's him yeah all right here we go for our viewers on the youtubes and as you can see i have listened to a lot of them he had tulsi gabbard mark cuban dana white like you know some of the big movers and shakers in the world and his his interviews are not they're not aggressive they're not loud they're they're often very detailed and he also has a uh, debates like he had a, an Israel Palestine debate that was really, it was like four and a half hours long and went into a lot of details about uh, what's going on in that. I like my Israel realm. debates in 90 seconds on iTunes Reels. No, okay. No, I don't no, like it. And you have the attention span of a net. But... I can save the whole world in 90 seconds. <laughs> no, I, 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 <laughs> I don't even want to have that conversation at all. I don't care if it's for three days or three years or three hours. It's a tough topic. It's a tough topic. It is a tough topic. And, um, but yeah, maybe I'll check them out if I get bored. I probably won't. Yeah. Um, uh, one of my favorite recently was Annie Jacobson. She's written a book where she talked to a lot of former heads of state about what would happen if there really was a nuclear war. And wow, just 
it, the sheer the sheer craziness behind the scenes in our government uh, <laughs> kind of makes me hope that day never ever ever comes. I don't need to watch that. Oh, <laughs> it's the man, stuff melts down. People eat people. Society crumbles apart, and my eighty yeah. percent of people die. Okay, is that good enough for you? That works. Yeah, I think that's pretty much how it goes down. Uh, next story. All right, next story up. Hold on, let me switch the screen. There we go. <laughs> next, <laughs> next story up. Uh, a new book titled "The Anxious Generation: How the Great Rewiring of Childhood Is Causing an Epidemic of Mental Illness." That is quite a title. Uh, mm -hmm. It's by Jonathan uh, Haight Allen Lane. Uh, it's uh, making some startling and concerning statements regarding the wiring of the teenage brain and how social media's fire hose is negatively affecting its development. Now, while the science behind a correlation between a rise in teenage anxiety and the use of social media remains unproven, the case for thinking twice about these services remains strong. What do you think? The Chinese government and TikTok are corrupting your children and making them turn the frog gay or whatever the statements are. Um, children need guidance. If you don't guide them, they will be guided by somebody else. It's the same thing. The little brother uh, thinks that you could use aluminum foil as a condom because his older brother said that one time he used foil as a condom. If you don't educate your kids, someone else will do it. If you let them sit on the phone and watch Cocomelon all day, the Cocomelon will teach them. <laughs> the rotting of the br children have always been depressed and sad. And when they weren't depressed and sad, they were working in mines and in fields. And guess what? They were not happy about it. So I don't <laughs> care what time period it was in the history of human existence. There has never been a time where teenagers were happy. It just doesn't exist. There's not one. Not one. So now that you got phones, if you don't set boundaries for your children, it's your fault. Like I, I, my daughter, I, I've had her run up crazy numbers on social media and then she gets bored with it. And then we sell them. And I'm like, bro, you could just be making money. And she just doesn't care. Why does she not care? Even though she's got a phone in her hand all the time, she's taking pictures. She's listening to podcasts. She's doing all the things. But when she's in the car, we're driving, no phone. We're at the dinner table, no phone. We go to the movies, no phone. I actually like watching shows and, and things with commercials in it now because if we're watching a show and a commercial comes on, hey, check your phone during a commercial. When the show's on, no commercial. When we're talking to each other, we put our phones down. And so she doesn't have anxiety needing her phone. But when you give these kids these devices and it's their whole world, then that's on you as a parent. Right. I, I, I coach softball. I, I coached. I don't have to anymore. She's in high school now. But the girls would always be out with their phones out. Now, I would sit there and I'd be like, give me your phone. And teenage girls who were 14 or 15 would give me their phone. And their parents would look at me like, how did you do that? And I'm like, what are you <laughs> talking about? They're like, Sh you just put your hand out and she put the phone in your hand. And I'm like, who bought the phone? I did. Who pays the phone bill? I did. What do you mean you can't take the phone from your child? First of all, kids, trust me, I'm not going through their phone trying to find Snapchats and, and, and conversations with their friends. I'm usually going to turn the phone off because you got to focus on the game or I'm doing dumb stuff like taking selfies or whatever. Um, but they trust me to take their phone because I know what I'm doing. But they also have respect because I'm an adult. And I'm like, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, give me your phone. Like. Parents run around here like I, I can't get Billy off and Billy off the phone. He's just yelling at me and he's gonna be mad the whole time. He he throws a heck of a tantrum if I take his phone and I, I just don't know why. <laughs> and I'm just like, geez, Jimmy Joseph Reed Baker. That sounds like a you problem. So maybe your kid might be depressed on their phone or cry in the corner when you take it. You better get these kids hooked off five early. Cause if you don't, if you don't give them the education, give them time periods of separation i hate the uh, you can use the ipad for an hour tommy you get two hours a week hey guess what it's tuesday we're not doing nothing you can run on this all day long C wednesday we got grandma's house we got grocery shopping we got ain't no tablet today now ain't an hour or nothing because you negotiate with terrorists what happens is i was supposed to get an hour a day and i didn't even get my hour <laughs> like nah dude 
you set up certain <laughs> times and places where you don't have the device early enough on so that they create natural patterns. When you're at your job, everybody complains when they go to get coffee. I'm, I'm going on such a rant about this. I'm so sorry. You go to get coffee and the bar well, barista's just on their cell phone and they're not really paying attention to my order because nobody told them to get off the phone and they don't know how to work without being attached to the device. I, I'm sitting here. Uh, the, the phone's here. I get it. I get it. The only, the only reason I even got it close to me to care is in case my daughter's fighting aliens in the middle of a lake and she might need me. Other than that, yeah, I mean, I got another year of freedom. Once she turns 18, she wants to fight them aliens by herself for a little bit because I'm in the middle of a podcast with Uncle Ryan and I'm busy right now. <laughs> so, all that to be said, if you want your kid not to be depressed, fix them early. But they're teenagers. They're always going to be depressed. There's always going to be a problem. Trust you me. Trust you me. My daughter is the least dramatic drama kid in America and she still gets depressed over nothing. And I'm like, why do you even care? She's like, I don't care, but it's still annoying. And I'm like, that's life. So uh, how about you, Ryan? You, th you think <laughs> the opening act is the headliner on this yeah. one? Uh <laughs> kids are addicted to the, to the to the devices. My son is addicted to his tablet because I foolishly thought that Minecraft would be educational enough to get him interested in engineering and architecture and building and learning how, you know, you, you, you have to get resources to make things. And now a year later, that's all he thinks about is Minecraft. He thinks I love Minecraft. I want to play Minecraft. I want to get, I want to, he has his own server. He has all this other stuff. However, during weekdays in the morning, no tablet, you know, cause we got to get ready for school. And for a while there, he would wake up, run into our room and say, good morning. Where's my tablet? And I was like, no. Nah. So I, I'm one of those parents you spoke of, but thankfully we're getting it under control now. <laughs> <laughs> you out here trying to put toothpaste back in the tube. You... <laughs> I thought I'd be good for education. I thought I'd to learn engineering. Get them up. Legos help you build something, bro. Yeah. Old school building blocks. Hey, Dad, I built a castle. Good job, Billy. <laughs> Next time, let's build a battleship. I built a tank, Dad. Awesome. You're ready for the U.S. government, Johnny. <laughs> let's go. But no, not you. Build worlds upon worlds, my son. In a digital place with blockheaded people and lambs and sheep that you can bash over the head to feed your family of new goats. Forge fire in the dungeons of hell, son. And then bring ice cream to watch them melt and create a lake pool upon yourself in the floating city that you made in your own server. I know that you're young and you have no idea what one line of code looks like. But trust you me, the engineer inside you is being built. <laughs> Fuck out of here. You rookie. That's something that, that you tricked yourself into something the kids trick their parents into. Well, Dad, you know, as part of the STEM program, if I get really good at Call of Duty, I could be a soldier of fortune. You know what I mean? I, I just I just need to play it, Dad. I'm, I'm working on my killing streak, and golly gee, you know what I mean? I do more before 5 a.m. than most people do in the day. Honey, I had to get him a PS5. He seems so dedicated about protecting our home front. He seems so protective of our home front, honey. <laughs> uh, rookie mistake by you. At least yeah. you're trying to get it real back in. I'm trying. <laughs> get, get my guy some Legos. Get first of all, build him a PC. Get him off the dang um tablet. Make him actually click some keys. So at least he's learned how to type. I have done that. He actually has a full fledged PC right now. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's better. Yeah. I, 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 my daughter plays uh, uh, Minecraft, too. She ain't playing her on no tablet. She tried the tablet thing. I was like, that's for you little punk rookie friends with no computer. Not you. Not you. You better get over here. And then she wanted to get into Sims. I, 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 I was hooked up Sims. She's like, I need money to buy. I said, you don't need money to buy nothing. Google cheat codes. Google, and look, now she out here crafting all kinds of magical mystery stuff for free. Hacking. Go ahead and look, figure out how to hack what you want. You want a new dress? 
You better Google how to hack a draft. You better. I ain't, I ain't got four two ninety nine for you. Ain't no V bucks in this house. I'm not you yeah. boy. You just oh rookie fathers boy. Rookie fathers. You just out here. He gonna be running the house. As a matter of fact, where you going? Let's get the boy up here. <laughs> Let's get the boy up here. We, I would have found your place, but I I know who's running the ship over there. He got he got you in a death choke hole. He out here like, look, man, we can do Roblox and Minecraft, Dad. That's what we do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, you kids aren't depressed. Just just watch and pay attention to him and love him. Give him a hug every once in a while. What's the next story? Bless America. Um, <laughs> Chat GPT. Well, no. We don't want to hear that GBT. <laughs> and we're all tired. Of, raise your hand if you're tired of saying chat GBT. I, I'm raising my hand right now. Chat GBT 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 2, 1, 11. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Chat, chat GBT did what today? Okay. <laughs> chat GPT will no longer require you to sign in to use the popular AI chat service. But there's a catch. Mm. If you choose to remain anonymous, you can't tell OpenAI not to use your chat to help train the model. And you'll have a more restrictive experience than if you had signed in. So is it free now? It's free, free. free? Like it's always been free, but now it's free, free. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it free? Because it was free, but it wasn't free. Yeah, it was it was free, but you got to give me all your information so I can advertise to you. Yeah. Now it's free, free, free. Yeah, okay. I'll take but, free, free, chat GBT. Yeah, but the robot can read everything you send it and, well, and store that information for later. That, that's the thing that kills me the most too, right? So I have a story idea. I could use one of these chat gbt bot things to write a story for me write an article for me right write a screenplay it's in the cloud somewhere if you go use chat gbt and let's say you've got the novel of a lifetime oh, and you just don't know how to write it but you can describe it and you can like get it framed out how much lead time do you think that you have before somebody in that system who scans over and looks over ideas and just goes and runs with your idea. Do you think that's going to happen? Oh, man. A day, maybe, if you're lucky. So I, I think about that all the time. Like, as powerful as it is, how much information do you want to give it? You know, And I, again, if you're going to capitalize on it, sure. But I'm talking about people that procrastinate. Like, huh, let me help you flesh out your idea for your new business. And you've got a business idea. And you say, how to get to... Of give me 50 points to do to start my business on eco cycle recycling cycle cycles, and it's like do this, 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 and this. Open up a business at LLC, da, 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 da. and then somebody's in the background, like he wants to create a what that's a great idea. And anybody who has access to these ideas, these thoughts, these processes do have access to capital, do have access to gaining more capital. So I'm just waiting for the day when somebody's like. I wrote that script two years ago and I used chat GBT to help flush it out. And I never submitted it anywhere, did anything, but now my movie's on Netflix. Oh yeah. I'm waiting for today. You know, there's there was that movie. Her is what I always think about with chat GPT. And I remember that one scene where he's like, he falls in love with her and she says she loves him. And then he finds out that she's actually talking to 2 million other people and they're all in love with her too. It's like the conversation you're having with chat GPT, it is also having with dozens and dozens and dozens of other people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Cause everything it feeds you, it knows, and it's going to feed the next person that, that comes close to the same question. So there is a, um, see if you can look it up while I talk about it. There is a, a comedian, uh, someone who used chat GPT to recreate Joe Carlin's voice talking about AI. And it was so spot on because I'm thinking to myself, if you could recreate Richard Pryor, if you could re recreate um, just older actors, actresses, comedians, and make it in their voice by feeding them. This guy's got seven comedy specials. You feed him all the comedy specials. You feed him all the stand-up routines. And you say, write something about such and such today in this voice. And it's just scary what it can do after what you give it. 
So I, there, there's a lot of things I want to use ChatGBT for that I'm actually scared to put out into the ethos. Just like when you Google something or back in the day when GoDaddy used to steal your domains. If you had a good domain idea and if you didn't buy it right then, but you searched it through GoDaddy, there was something in that algorithm where they're like, oh, this is a good domain. He didn't buy it. Nobody's bought it. We're going to buy it. And then you go back and GoDaddy's like, oh, we'll sell it to you for $2,000. It was available two days ago and GoDaddy bought it. And that would happen. Just like, you know, when you sit there and you're talking about pillows and then your phone starts showing you ads for pillows. And you're like, I, I didn't, I didn't type pillows into my phone at all, but my phone's listening to me, but they tell you that it's not. Uh, did you find it? I did not. I did not find an actual copy of the video. It says it's unavailable. All right. Well, maybe um, they took it down. It, it, was, it was good. I, I'll try and find it. If I can find it, I'll put it in the uh, edit for the show. Or maybe we'll play it next time when you get back because I want you to hear how amazing it was. Um, what is our next story? Uh, let's see here. The next story is Discord. Hey, I we have a Discord. Discord. We do? We do. What? We how come do? I didn't know this. I mean, I, I, look, look, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to get in the rhythm of doing shows and being consistent, but we do have a Discord. Uh, I'll give you a link to it so you can get in there and look yes. around. If you, if you deem, I co-host the show. I'm not on the Discord. If you deem my setup process of this Discord appropriate, that I we will start sharing it out to the masses. Uh, yeah, I did set up a Discord. I just, I don't be discording like that, but I do, but I don't. So I do. Maybe we can start discording. We gonna start yeah. discording. I'll chat with all of you, every oh, one of you. God. Discord. So okay, I'll yeah. oh, put that on the notes there. The Discord. There I'm go. sorry. I apologize. I'm horrible today. Everybody, I apologize for my ranting today. Back to the story. There's a Discord <laughs> story. What is it? Discord, the extremely popular chat application, initially used by gamers and now used by companies, communities, and friend groups alike, and apparently podcasts that I'm a part of and don't know about, is dipping its toes into the world of advertising. Initial advertisements appearing on the platform are described as minimally in intrusive with the stated goal of being uh being introducing uh gamers to new games uh, however this kind of flies in the face of discord's long-standing reputation for being anti-advertisement is this about face concerning to you do i get a cut of the <laughs> advertising in my discord if i build up a community and you're showing advertisement in that community that i've built Shouldn't I in that discord get a share of revenue for amount of users, right? So if you're going to Apple and Apple says, well, we're going to pay you two cents for every view or whatever. And I've got 50,000 people in my discord. Shouldn't I get 25 cents a week or something? I discord? think so. Yeah. So if, if you're going to go about face, you should. Do what YouTube does. You should share the rev. You should rev to share. Share revenue. I don't know what you want to call that. I, I didn't make it up. I didn't create the thing or anything like that. I'm just saying, <laughs> if that's what you want to do, that's how you make everybody happy. Right? Yeah. What are your thoughts? I love Discord. I love everything about Discord. I love the fact that I can I can stream to it. I can voice chat. I can text chat. I can create communities. I can do all of that, and I don't have to pay them a dime. I like that. I don't want that to change. However, if ads are a thing, don't make them intrusive. And so far, Discord's behaving, but you know how it is. It starts out with one little ad here, and then before you know it, every other message is an ad, just like Facebook, just like Twitter. So I'm thinking maybe we should like do a movie night on Discord. Oh. Um, something we're all together, possibly. Uh, cause I do, I do on my sports show, we do uh, movie reviews every week and, uh, we pick old eighties or nineties movies to, to watch. And I was just thinking of discord. I'm like, oh, I could play the movies in there. We could all watch them together. So maybe you and I should figure out when you get back from your hiatus, if you're not replaced <laughs> things that we could do with discord with the people and, uh, you know, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. I like that um, idea. Movie night. Like Discord, if you want to rev share, go ahead and throw them ads up. If you don't want to rev share, I'm very upset with you, and I think it's a terrible, terrible decision. <laughs> what's, the, what's the next story? Uncle Owen needs a cut. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, the next story here, Apple appears to be favoring podcasts that participate in its subscription-based revenue model, giving Apple a cut of the subscription revenue for bonus episodes, extra content, and other exclusives to paying subscribers. Now, this is all about the highly coveted carousel at the top of the podcast app that has long been a springboard for podcasts. And reports state that Apple is encouraging podcasters to sign up for the service if they want to have a better chance of appearing in that spot. Ugh, it seems like Apple will do anything for a little money. Well, Ryan, yeah, don't we want a little bit of money? I do want a little bit of money. Then maybe we should try and do it too. Well, then I have to do more work. Why would you have to do more work? Well, you know, we have to give exclusives to the people that are paying us money. <laughs> look, 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 look. <laughs> <laughs> If we if we set it up and we do it right, the exclusives will be our Discord hangouts. Oh, really? our our fireside chats. Uh, a lot of people want me to bring back uh, my uh, doc tales where I interview people. I could fold that all in because it's already all on this channel. I mean, we could do some things that are bona fide. I could I could solidify some things. We can quantify some things. I don't know how much cut is Apple trying to take. They trying to take that thirty percent. Uh, I don't know. Let me see here. <laughs> I, forgot, I, I already forgot. I, I, I was I, I read the article, but I, I don't remember if I now I'm thinking about it actually for real and doing it. I'm trying to figure out what Apple's cut, what they wanted to be. They wanted to be 30%. Now we back into the whole thing. Y'all trying to put me back into a corner. Apple takes 30% of subscriber revenue the first year that the show signs up and 15% each subsequent year. So that's good because most podcasts don't make it past three episodes. <laughs> that's the fact. When everybody, <laughs> everybody's got a podcast, you're absolutely right. There are 4 million podcasts. Only 250,000 of them have more than three episodes. So if you made it past three episodes, you are in a very finite group. So as much as it is a, a hard thing to find shows, it's all about putting yourself out there. I've been doing a poor job. You probably haven't even watched the show. You haven't listened to this show, but when Ryan gets back and after I've ramped this thing up for the next two weeks without him, you will definitely find this show. You'll definitely hear about this show. It might fall off a cliff when Ryan gets back, but I'm just saying, you know what I mean? PZ Gazer will be out here gazing. Oh, you go, oh, we got the, we got the eclipse next week. You going to gaze at the eclipse? I'm, gonna, I'm going to gaze the eclipse for sure. It's actually coming right through Austin. So Y2K is coming. Everything's falling apart. Uh, the ships are going to hit all the bridges. <laughs> Uh, we're going to live in tunnels, and there's a nuclear fallout coming. Just so you know, be aware and be prepared. Um, yes. But yeah, th that the the revenue drop off of fifteen percent, I like a lot, and I wish Spotify would do that too because they run ads and things like that. We're, we're going to start doing all the fun things when you get back uh, next month because I'm going to start doing it with my sports thing too while I'm in the off season to ramp up for football. So yeah, there's a lot of fun things that we could do, but we already have a Discord, so at least that's that. Yeah, and I will join it soon. <laughs> I'll let you in. All right. I'll let you in. What else All we got? Right. Let's get to this uh, next story here. Microsoft and Intel are working on a new branding for PCs that are equipped for AI. An AI PC, as it is called, can only carry this new designation if it includes a CPU or central processing unit, a GPU, graphics processing unit, and a new type of processing unit called an NPU, or Neural Processing Unit. But that's not all. The PC also has to have a dedicated co-pilot button on the keyboard. Another dedicated button. This is Gimmick City, and I hate it. Like, just tell me. You. It's just Gimmick. Like, for all this, you might as well just put it in Chromebooks, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah. Like, put put... AI in a Chromebook, like you with the N NVIDIA, and we're doing all the high end. How much I don't need it's doing all the processing on the internet. I, my computer is not processing AI stuff. It, am I gonna? Oh, God, this again. I understand that when you buy a, an, a microwave, it's nice to have a pizza button, it's nice to have a baked potato button, it's nice to have a popcorn button. I get those things, but at what point are you never using those actual freaking buttons anyway? Oh. Like, I'm serious. When's the last time you used the defrost chicken button 
on your microwave. You don't. But at some point after 1985, they're like, Jimmy, we've got to put defrost chicken buttons on our microwaves. Why we got to do that? Well, Samsung did it last week. We need more buttons. What else can we defrost? Huh? What else? Ice cream? Defrost ice cream. Oh, oh, air fryers. Okay, we're gonna fr- we're frying the air now. Is there oil in this? Fr- oh God, it's just <laughs> so much. And that's what this feels like. Let's just put an AI button on it to buy a laptop. I know people are buying Macs over PCs, but my goodness, again, put this in your Chromebook. Change Chromebook. Make Chromebook sexy because that's the thing that's flying off the shelves in all the schools for all the young kids. Stuff that people can afford to use. But just give me another function button of AI. What the funk is that button going to do? What what kind of AI processing is this laptop or computer going to be doing with this neuro chip? It better do something sexy, fun, and free for me, and it it's, better impress me. It sounds like a lot of spoken mirrors to me. By the way, the only button I use on the microwave is add 30 seconds, and I guarantee you half your audience is in the same boat. Yeah, okay, Mr. Fancy, add 30 seconds? <laughs> I'm a precise cook. I know, I'm fat, boy. I've been cooking for a long time. I look at my meal. I'm like, yo. That's like two minutes and 45 seconds right there. Boop, boop, boop. And that's it. I know what it is. And you know what? I'm a man. When I'm wrong and it's still cold, I suffer and eat it anyway. I just mix it up a little <laughs> bit more. You know what I mean? Because I'm a man. Ain't no extra 30 second button in my life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what else? <laughs> I don't know what else these, uh, these, these AI powered computers are going to do, but I'm getting so tired of there's like every company wants to do its own flavor of AI. And before long, we're, we're all going to be using different AIs for every little different thing. And then I'll have a conversation with Google's AI and Microsoft's AI is going to be mad at me because I'm cheating on it. And every, I, I just, I'm tired of it. I, yeah. I want one AI solution that everyone just gets behind. Okay. Well, that's why you have chat GBT. That's four, why I love that. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You hate the name chat GBT. I hate that name. But I do love I love Chat uh, Chat GPT. Yeah, so we were talking about that. Like, <laughs> you, you wanted to be Scooby McScooby. Like, what 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 name? What I just is want something. GPT? I want something sexy. All right. I want like like Stone GPT. Yeah. No. What's the What's the video <laughs> one? Sora. Oh yeah, Sora, dude. Sora. They they nailed it with Sora. Sora is a beautiful name you think sora in your mind you're not thinking like an 800 pound gorilla you're thinking like a really beautiful woman okay chad gpt needs a sexy name like that because right now it's named like a monitor or a samsung phone it needs to get a sexy name sora sounds like a uh, herpes a medical ad in the middle of the night sora okay. sora now you're like, ruined oh, it. Yeah, what? <laughs> i could ruin anything i could ruin anything you throw herpes in the title and it just makes everything sound less sexy than it did because <laughs> when i said sora you're like oh yeah 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 now sora now you're upset because you're thinking uh-huh. about the side effects coffee heady anally bleeding oh you know all the crazy things that come with those kind of names like sora so anyway, no matter what you call it, you would have been annoyed by hearing it because we hear it so freaking much. So we are stuck with the chat GBT. Um, it, it, it is annoying because it's chat. There's so many much more things to do after you chat now. So it's like we're not just chatting anymore. We are having full on, full grown adult conversations with the Internet. And we all yeah. love it. and We're addicted to it. And everything's a gimmick now. Yeah, I, lo- I prefer do my work for me, GBT. Like if yeah. I can get it to just do that. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. We got one last story here. Here we go. And it's regarding AT&T. AT&T has reset passcodes for millions of subscribers after a data dump on the dark web revealed tons of private information, including users' names, addresses, phone numbers, and passcodes. The data set included information on 7.6 million current subscribers and as many as 65.4 million former account holders. To make matters worse, the breach happened in 2019. That's pre-pandemic. That's BC. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, like... Stuff like this happens, and and you hear about it all the time. Yeah, Target had a leak, and it's like, oh, you know, change your Target credit card. Don't get. It's crazy that it was that many people in 2019, and now all of a sudden you're hitting the reset button. Yeah, no accountability with any of these companies with any of this stuff, and your phone is your life. Once you get a hold of somebody's phone password, 
an email, you can empty bank accounts. You could you could ruin someone's life with those passwords that are held and in, 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 within the phone, which is okay. the only reason why I still like <sighs> Apple because you know I can hide my email and do all the fake fugazi password things. And since I have a Mac, when I'm on my Mac, it's easy. I just use my fingerprint scanner and all that kind of stuff. And it's easy. But when you're not on your Mac and you're and you live in that lifestyle of passwords, it is damn near impossible because you're not using Safari on another computer to get into your account. You gotta log in with the phone, have the phone accept the thing, and then send it back. It, it's a lot, but yeah. it's crazy that they just got away with not doing anything for four years. For yeah. four years. And this, this makes me mad. I'm an AT&T user. And when you think about the passcodes, right? These are four-digit passcodes. Now, what else has a four-digit passcode? Your ATM card. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. And who yeah. is using different four-digit codes for all these? Oh, your alarm system on your house. Guarantee it's the same code for all three for most people. Mine is. <laughs> you if you If you get in my house, you get in my phone, you can get into my, my my Visa debit card, my bank cards. You you just can. And as I said it out loud, I should change that. But <laughs> <laughs> now Ooh, the whole world that, knows. That's good. Uh, yeah, I mean that's scary. Yeah, I mean you want to get in here? Come on through, brother. Come on through. <laughs> I mean at the same time, uh, I have like a digital lock, so I don't have to worry about that too much. But again, if you have my phone, you knock me over the head. You just walk up to the door, and my door is going to open. Man. Technology helps a whole lot of things, but it just make, makes it easier for criminals to get away with whatever they want to. Now that I think about that, I should change that too because my door automatically locks. Um, I, I'm notorious for not locking my doors. Before the technology allowed me to have automatic locks and, and fingerprint readers and touchpads and all that kind of stuff, I just never locked my door. I have pit bulls. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've had, I, people have tried to rob my house like three times. One time somebody robbed my house and got away with it, and it was two weeks after my dog died and there was a, a storm. Uh, so the power was out in the neighborhood. That's the only reason they got away with robbing my house. Cause otherwise you come to my house, I got pit bulls in here. Enjoy. Like <laughs> as soon as you come in, there's an automatic deterrent. So I just never locked my doors. But now with like the, the new technology after two minutes, when I leave or no matter what, the door automatically locks itself. And when I walk up, it automatically locks itself. So for a lazy person like me, it's nice that it does actually still lock the door. Cause before I just never locked my doors. Yeah, but as an AT&T user, you should call somebody. There should be a class action. They should owe you oh, uh, yeah. a credit. They're not going to give you anything. They're going to say, oh, we're sorry. Right here's $2. No, they're going to say, the oh, we have settled for $800 million, and you're one of like uh, 100 yeah. million people, so you're going to get, you know, five cents. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. The only one get, that gets paid in a class action lawsuit is the lawyer. That's the yeah. only one that gets paid. Yeah, or whoever did it first. The person did yeah. it first also gets a nice little chunk. Uh, I don't know how that works out, but it does work out because they got to pay the lawyer, got the lawyer, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, we're done for the day. A uh, lot more energy. Good job, Ryan, bringing up your pep, okay? Yeah. Last time I was a little bit down, but, you know, negativity breeds negativity, I guess. So, <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe if you're on the YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe on the YouTube. Um, Ryan is going to be down for at least a week or two or seven uh, again <laughs> next week. I don't know who I'm going to have on with me. Hopefully somebody who knows how to read so I don't have to uh, out loud at least at all. I could can read just fine on my own in my mind. But sometimes when I say things out loud, it don't sound right. So <laughs> we'll see who the guest is next week that I'm replacing Ryan with briefly. And uh, yeah. We got a Discord coming. We got new subscribe options coming. Maybe we're going to have some bonus content coming. And like I said, I got to get Ryan on this AI train. When he gets back to full strength and he gets back to what he's doing, he got to help his child get off the drugs. Got his son addicted to them dang gum blocks, okay? You know, boy, I tell you what. If you're a parent struggling with your child and a tablet, reach out to O-Doctor. I'll come to your house, smack you and the child in the back of the head, take the tablet away. It'll work itself out just fine after that. Trust me. All right. Okay. Good. <laughs> We're out for the night. Uh, check out PC Gazer on the Twitters. And obviously, oh, doctor, I'm on the Twitters too. And uh, we'll talk to you next week.